let's talk a little bit about color. So we're going to take a detour about color because color is something that we use all the time, but it can very easily get out of hand and can show things that were not supposed to be there. So let's talk about color space first. of all. One way to talk about color is to talk about hue, basically the tint of the color. Then talk about how much, how saturated a color is, where there's, lowly, where there's low saturation or high saturation, and then how dark it is. That's how value, how the value of it. Notice that the overall light emission of it, we, we can call it luminosity. So in the standard color wheel, and we're talking a graphic design color wheel, there's colors that are, that are completely opposite to each other. Those colors are called complementary. As it turns out, our eyes are very comfortable with complementary colors. If you're ever doing a design and you choose colors that are completely across from each other in the color spectrum, in fact, they look like they belong together, in their, that they, they're very harmonious with each other, although there's obviously the contrast of hue. Similar, you can, rather than doing across from each other, you can do a third of the way, and those are called triadic colors. Or if you want to, you can choose colors that are actually in the same hue by choosing analogous colors. So these are colors that would be basically 15 degrees of each other. By choosing values that are exactly 15 degrees of hue of each other, you actually choose colors that are distinct enough to actually be discernible from each other, also feel like they work together well, while actually being in the same family. Now, in many ways, people look at this and they say, okay, so wouldn't it be best to use all the colors possible if we wanted to show as much information as possible? And in fact, that's where the use of the rainbow color map comes in. So here, I'm showing the hue wheel. Now, notice this is actually for a computer system, so it's actually not exactly the same as the color, primary color wheel that artists would use. In this case, you can see that green is actually opposite to magenta, not to purple like it would be in, in, in an artistic color wheel. However, rather than using RGB values when you're doing programming, hue is actually much easier to use because if you want to use single, single, a, single, a different color, a different tint, all you do is you go between 0 and 360, or 0 and 2 pi. So most people re realize this, and they think that if you want to encode data using color, the best thing is to use hue. And basically, you map your data from 0 to 360. Well, obviously, the, the first problem is that since this is a circle, you're going to start with purple, and you're going to end in purple as well. So you're saying that really high values and the really low, low values map to the same color, which is obviously a problem. Now, that in of itself, regardless of what you adjust for that by either cutting the, the, the hue mapping to something smaller rather than going to 300 instead of going all the way to 360, or whether you make it, maybe make the, the, the beginning much darker and the end much lighter, there is actually an inherent problem, and the problem is luminosity. If we actually map each of these colors in the color wheel to luminosity, you'll see that blue actually is just a much darker color intrinsically. But meanwhile, yellow is a much brighter color. So what does that mean? So let's look at an adjusted rainbow color map. We actually make it darker at, at both ends and we do not touch purple. If we look at this image and we just look at luminosity, and basically a way to achieve this is by changing this image to grayscale, then basically what you've done is you've created a visual element at the top element and at the bottom element, and then actually created a third element by highlighting the middle values. And it's very clear to see that, that in fact, you are very much highlighting these middle ranges and penalizing both ends. A way to fix this is if we look at this at, at, at a color map, in this case, this one goes using CMYK space, and it goes from, from purple into red, but then it darkens the bottom and it lightens the, the top values to almost white, you still have these problems of luminosity jumps and places that are much darker when you didn't intend them to be. If you actually adjusted this to create an even ramp in luminosity, you end up with a color map here on the right, which is much more even in color, as you can see from this image. Now notice that if your intention was in fact to highlight the blue ring right here, or to highlight the cyan ring right here, then this spectrum rainbow color map is what you want. But if you just want 
even objective distribution of color, then you need to use this color adjusted color maps. So let's look, look at four color maps. We, we're going to look at a luminosity adjusted uh, a color map, a rainbow color map. We're going to use one that goes between white to orange to red and black, a simple grayscale, and one that just goes from red to green. When we, when, when we actually map these to different structures, a gradient in each direction, one that goes from the center to the outside, or a, a checkerboard-like structure, then we see that the difference in visual elements that we create by using one versus the other is actually quite striking. If you look at the grayscale version of this, you can see that the rainbow color map definitely creates some, some, some different shapes right here that are very much visually prominent. Now, if this is what you desired, then this is probably what you should use. And in fact, there is a set of color adjusted uh, color transfer functions that have been developed by different entities to create a nice library of color maps that, can, uh, that serves different purposes. So for instance, if you look at this whole series of color maps, you would, if you wanted to choose something that actually shows, for instance, contours, in, in a map, then you would so, use something that actually has these high frequency jumps that you can see in some of the, some of the elements right here, which actually jump different colors right here on different color map, or this one which actually uses different colors but it still use this jump in colors. If we switch to the grayscale version, you can see definitely the color maps that are, that are even colored, the ones that go from dark to white, or the ones that show some very high frequencies. As an example, if we, sh if we map these to a to uh, some data from NOAA on, t on temperature of the ocean uh, for a yearly average at 100 meter depth. If we use an even color, color map, again, because dark is, blue is darker, you're definitely highlighting these spots right here where it's actually quite cold. If we use a different color map that actually takes, in, takes advantage of a wider color range, you're actually intro introducing and you actually adjust it for, for luminosity, you are actually allowing to see the middle ranges a lot better rather than highlighting just extremes. Now, and again, the dark and, and, the, and the dark blue and, and purple are probably a slightly darker element anyway, so it actually shows those elements a little well. Now, if you use one of these even color, color maps and actually force different luminosity dips, for instance, right here, one time in the blues, one time in the middle of the, of the greens, and one time in the middle of the reds, then you're forcing to create kind of these rings or contours, which in fact, when you, when you map it, it actually creates a map that shows structure a lot better. So depending on what you want to do, you might even want a, a, a very smooth gradient in luminosity, or you might actually want to create dips in your color maps. Now, another thing you might want to do is you might want to actually use colors that are significant for the field that you're talking about. If you're talking about temperature, most people relate temper cold temperatures to blue, while high temperatures to warm colors like red and orange. In this case, using this color map actually shows that information, and it's much easier to discern the places where, it's, where the temperature has gone up rather than the places where the temperature has gone down. Now, in this case, if we, if we are not interested in the middle color, we can attenuate these values and make the zero value very clearly a dark color, so we're just looking at the extremes, and we get this, this color map, this result. Now, notice that this is actually being mapped between minus 3 and 3 all this time. If we adjust the range by simply going to a smaller window of data, and we go between minus 1 and 1, then we're basically exaggerating some of these ramps at the, at the higher ends now, which are now much closer to the middle, and you actually sh start coming up with different structures. So playing with your color maps, both for purpose and how they map for your data, will definitely have different results as you show your data. 